Welcome into the casual gaming conversation. I'm Connor. That's Nick. This is your weekly gaming podcast from Co-op 64. This week, we're talking about the PS5 Pro, and we're talking about our predictions for the upcoming, the rumored upcoming state of play. It's looking like, what, do we do we have a confirmation? So it's Jeff Grubb would throw out Tuesday next week as that rumored timeline of when he shot the latest uh, game this morning and the when he started talking about it, he said 10 days. That would put it on Tuesday. Uh, so nine days from when we're shooting this podcast, eight days from when it posts. But it could be next week. We want to make sure that it's up. And yeah. also, there's the other aspect of if we were to shoot it next week and it is Tuesday, then you guys have one day before it's dated content compared to an entire week of enjoying these predictions and getting some hype going. Because I'm, Connor, I don't know if you know this. I kind of like these showcases. I'm a yeah. little bit of a fan of them. I'm telling you, I cooked with my predictions. I think my predictions are fucking fun, are really awesome. I so, think I have some fun ones, too. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's going to be exciting. None of my base, my usual ones. I didn't include Uncharted in this in this one. <laughs> For the it's first showing time, up, baby. It's showing if up. If I don't include it, that's when it's going to show up. Yeah. Uh, you did include it one time last year, and I predicted it, and I literally went to sleep the night before uh, the showcase, and I was like, it's happening. Like, I fully believed it. And also, this is the best part, Connor. This is what I love about video game showcases is it's anything's possible. Yeah. Until it happens, until it's over, anything is possible. And it's great. Yeah, it's going to be super fun. I'm excited to react to it whenever that eventually does happen. Hopefully, it's it's sooner rather than later. When, when the rumors are swirling like this, you start to feel pretty confident that it's, it's going to be happening soon. So that's exciting. A um, little bit of housekeeping for you before we jump into things. We stream on Twitch Monday through Thursday, 7 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. Nick is playing Celeste on Monday with me and Brady on the couch uh, co-piloting. He, he's definitely playing that game. He's certainly playing it. Connor, the funniest part was it says nine hours to beat that game. And I think I might be like seven. Like, so you can talk all the shit you want, but I'm beat. It's, I'm going to do it faster you are getting than the, someone else. You are getting to the levels. Yeah. But there is no finesse to anything that you're doing. Like you look so stilted doing a platformer that like it's it's it bothers me for whatever reason. It's like my jump shot, Connor. Okay, <laughs> it does. It's not gonna look good, but it might go in every now and then. Like it might work out. So uh, it, it's been fun. I've legitimately really enjoyed what I played thus far. It's one of those. I can't wait for Monday. Not just because I get to hang out with you and Brady on the couch and have a great time, but it is. I'm just excited to play more Celeste. Yeah. Tuesday, uh, Nick is probably finishing up Wind Waker, yes? Yeah, so the plan is we will go as long as it takes for Wind Waker unless it's like, okay, it is 10 p.m. You're not being this till 1 a.m. Let's just do a full another stream or even midnight. But if it is, hey, let's go to 11 o'clock, I'm going to do it. We're yep. going to make sure that it happens. So otherwise, uh, if he does finish it on Tuesday, he's starting up Mass Effect 1 on Thursday. Very exciting. Excited for him to get Mass Effect 2 because I don't like Mass Effect 1 that much. Um, then I am playing uh, The Last of Us on Wednesdays. I'm finishing it up. Um, I am in the the tunnel, the, the subway tunnel right now in uh, the summer section of the game. So if you know what that is, we're like at the end of the game. I'll, yeah. I'll finish it next stream, and then we're hopping into Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast. It's going to be fun. Yeah, so the plan there, though, is we're not going to start Sonic Wednesday. That is going to be the weekend after, yes. correct? Yeah, cool. so, so if I have to fill some time doing something yeah uh, we'll, we'll figure that Connor's out Connor's gonna so. knit on stream he's gonna <laughs> learn how to knit it's gonna be great yeah, it'll be fun um so that is what's going on over on twitch except uh in addition to all of that saturday laura and i me and my wife goof troop goofing it up 11 a.m eastern standard time on Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can you let the people know what Goof Troop is? I barely know what Goof Troop is. <laughs> I, I saw uh, Game Grumps play it like very early in their channel. It's like a co-op game, but I think it's like more like a puzzle type deal. You're like moving stuff around, trying to hit switches. It's a like top down, kind of like top down uh, kind of game. It's cool. It's fun. It's, it's got the vibe. It's only like two and a half, three hours long, apparently, but I'm pretty stupid, so it's probably going to go longer. Laura might carry me I was about this. to say, Laura, you're Laura, a dude, dummy, dude, but Playing Laura's a smart. game on the couch with Laura right there, and there's a puzzle si situation going on, oh, it's a cheat code, dude. She'll help me with it, and she'll she'll figure it out for me every single time. There is, She's way smarter than I There is <laughs> nothing better than uh, when I beat Choose the Kingdom, I was delirious, but my partner was sitting next to me at the time, and uh, she, she literally solved so many of those things 
But the best part was she was giving it maybe 10% of her attention. She was reading or doing something else. And then all of a sudden she'd be like, oh, you just do that. I'm like, how do you think of these things? Yeah. How, do, how are people this smart? And that is 100% the case for you and uh, Laura. Laura is much more intelligent than you yeah, for at sure. a consistent basis. Yeah. Um, so uh, other than that, the Ohio, the Ohio Retro Gaming Convention, November 2nd. Um, we're, we're nailing down all the final details on this, but... Uh, we have a panel 1130 to 12. If you want to come watch that, we're going to do the top 10 or top 20 greatest games of all time, according to the Co-op 64 community. So it'll be a live top 10 guessing list like you guys uh, have seen on TikTok. Then we're doing a meet and greet that night at a local barcade. So if you want to come enjoy the convention, enjoy the panel, enjoy the meet and greet. It's in Columbus on November 2nd. So make your plans if you would like to come. Connor, how many people do you think are going to bring you liquid death? To this convention and be agreed. At least a couple. I, I think that I'm going to get will. a couple of those, and I'm going to a couple of people bringing me uh, frozen pizzas that are cut in half. We we already know how this whole showcase is started, though, right? People are throwing shoes up on stage for the two shoes. Oh no! Don't tell them to do that. No, that's, I, that's I, a Connor, hazard. Connor, I didn't tell them to do that. Do I, not I do said, that. I said. If it happens, throw them at me. Okay. <laughs> okay, like make sure that we're not gonna hit somebody that's it's working gonna end at this poorly. panel. It's gonna end I'm not saying sure. to do it. I'm just saying that if you were to do it, throw them at me. Okay. Uh, Discord and merch in the link in the bio over on our TikTok page. Discord, we're over 1,700 community mm-hmm. members now. Um, played some Overwatch with the community last night. I like playing damage and tank. I'm lost on support. I like. I, I've been told that support like does more damage than it used to. Like if you're playing anybody but Mercy, basically, like you can still like be like an active member and getting getting eliminations, but like I just I would end the game with zero kills, just some heals or whatever. And I'm just like, I don't feel like I'm helping the team. But Overwatch is fun. Overwatch is a good time. So that was fun last night playing with the community. Um I think I'm definitely gonna hop into more of that for yeah. sure. It's fun. It's it's just a good time. I you've never played Overwatch, right? Yeah, I, I went and played at a party. Like, I was super antisocial. This was uh, back early, early college where, like, I, I didn't know anyone, but there was a couple of nerdy people at the party playing some Overwatch, and they just had up on the Xbox, and I was like, give me Fuck the it. sticks. Yeah. I'll, I'll hop Overwatch in. was so big when I was in college, and, like, it was, it was like, the new hotness for, like, a few years after that. Such a, such a sad state of affairs for... Uh, for overwatch too like i feel yeah. bad for the people who, like as somebody who's in like into a really competitive shooter with valorant and like getting constant updates and has like a vibrant pro scene it's i feel bad for overwatch too it was like at the, the peak of popularity and it, and it had it it had yep. it in its hands it could have had like a long running could have had a, a counter-strike type of of run with how popular it was and it just it just fumbled the bag completely. for sure just so sad um apple reviews if you like the podcast and you want to leave a nice review even if you listen on spotify or youtube going over to apple and uh giving us five stars or writing a review really helps out uh the show and gets more people gets it in front of more people so that that would be a huge help if you're interested in doing that but with that all out of the way, let's hop into our hot takes. Connor, how are you doing? You didn't I've, just ask been, me. I've just been on a run. We we I just we kind of naturally just got into the housekeeping. I, I saw I saw the opening to just kind of transition straight into that, and it's like I know. I've been with you all day, Nick. I so, know. Uh, I know how you're doing. Generally speaking, I'm doing good. But how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right. Uh, we're coming off of a big one. Metal Gear Solid Four, Guns of the Patriots. Metal Gear. Video games, y'all. Fucking yeah. video games. Nick's over here playing Metal Gear Solid. I'm playing The Last Guardian for no reason. Yeah. For no reason. I just was like, there was something that sparked in my mind that I was like, I kind of always wanted to play this. I, it's short. I wanted to play something on PS5. I owned it from forever ago digitally. So I'm like, fuck it. I'll give it a go. Magic. There's Magical two, experience. There's two things that I am having that exact experience of. I don't know why. Like, I want to do this right now. I have Ghost of Tsushima just chilling in my PlayStation 5, just ready to rock. And I'm like, I want to play two things right now really badly. I want to do Undertale Pacifist Run. Mm-hmm. I want to, like, I've been itching to hop back in. It is now the right time. It feels good. I want to do that. But also, I really want to play Katana Zero. I've, it, Art it, style, yeah. the pacing of it. Like, that seems like a game that I would really fuck with, and I want to hop in. I don't know who posted something about it in the Discord, but th- somebody did a review oh, really? was talking about Katana Zero, like, yesterday. So oh, a, lot of, a few people were talking about it. So I thought you just had seen this, so oh, now it's just a happenstance. It, it's a complete happenstance. I, Wednesday, when I had the afternoon to myself a little bit because uh, you were streaming, I played Super Mario Bros. 3 for, like, three hours. 
I suck at Super Mario Bros. 3. Yeah. I suck at it. Connor, I'm at the third world final boss, and I am just, I, like, I'm small, so I'm not, like, big enough to take a hit or anything, and I am getting cooked. I, Are I you need, using the save states or, like, the, the replay uh, feature I'm at not. all? Okay. The, the, so that is part of it. I am getting cooked. I am getting straight up destroyed and this is one of those honest moments that you gotta look at yourself in the mirror and just admit i'm not good at this i'm just not good at it i mean i've seen you play celeste so it it, it translates no car <laughs> i'm i think i'm all right at celeste like i think that there's a general sense of i'm gonna do the levels yeah. i'm not dying a ton and even though there's not swagger to it i'm doing all right i suck <laughs> like i am so bad and i need somebody to let me know if i just suck or if it's like I want you to play it eventually, like modernly in the next year or so, just to see if I'm insane or not. Because I think that it's really difficult, but I don't know if it's really difficult. So there's that. I'm enjoying that. I've got all the bots in Astrobot. Uh, I got all the puzzle pieces. Uh, I had to grind coins on Wednesday because I didn't want to look anything up. So I used the bird in Astrobot to find some extra trinkets as I was going around and... Man, oh man, those things are really helpful. But I did have to grind coins at the end for the uh, uh, the vending machine. machine. Yeah. So you do have every bot, every uh, puzzle piece. Have you done all the secret levels? Yes, I've done every level. Oh no, oh, of course, yeah, because you have all the bots. My bad. What, what am I? What am I saying? Yeah. So what? What do you have left to do? Just I like have the, little... the final level that I I I only mm-hmm. gave it a couple runs and then just yeah. stopped. I was busy uh, and then. Uh, the cleanup trophies, like the little, yeah, the, little the one-off things, and those are cool. Those are fun. Oh yeah, I assume that they're all great. And the best part is using the PlayStation hints. That was the first time I've ever done it. Is using those, uh, just popping it open, using a hint, and and going mm-hmm. from there. Those those are awesome and really really helpful. So, uh, yeah, that, it was a great little Wednesday. Uh, my whole weekend would just like disappear by playing Metal Gear Solid Four. And this entire week leading into it, I was dreading it because there were so many other things I wanted to play. But I'm like, oh, it's my weekend. Can't play any of those things. Gotta play Metal Gear Solid 4. And then I forgot that this is the sequel to one of my favorite series of all time, but also one of my favorite games of all time in Snake Eater. And we'll do what we've been playing, and I will go and do a review type thing and a full discussion with it. That game is unbelievable because it has the Herculean task of going and resolving three prior games, and it does so flawlessly. I, I I would say flawlessly in the sense of like the story beats and what it's trying to do and make sense of all of it and give characters these moments. I am getting chills thinking about this game. I Metal Gear is in my podium now of franchises. I understand all of it. Well, correction, I don't understand all of it, but I understand why people discuss it in the way that they do now. Um, I can't wait for you to play three. I am really excited for Delta next year because I do have an itch at the end of ne- like the year. I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, I- I'm going to want to play Snake Eater. And then Delta is just going to be there. I'm like, oh, that's the next time I'm going to play Snake Eater. What will be through Delta. It? Snake uh, Delta. What do you think we get Delta? Uh, it's not in any of my state of play predictions, which is interesting because... Uh, I think that that could show up there potentially, yeah. with the, especially the discussion of they, I mean, they're working on the second collection. They've already confirmed that that is a thing there could get announced. It's possible. I, so they said that they, they want to do the second collection. I don't think they said that they're like actively working on it. They, I think they're never going to do it. You don't do a volume one without a volume two. Well, you can't get they're not going to be able to get MGS three running like you I mean is, four. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm just four running. Like I feel like it's it's Konami and anything that takes like a decent amount of work, they're just like. Mm, no. <laughs> I I hope that Konami's doing what we all hope they're doing, right. and I hope Silent Hill Two is awesome, and I hope that uh, this uh, Delta is awesome, and I hope the next collection they learn some lessons. Like I would love Konami to make a comeback. That's yeah. like all I want. They have so many great franchises. I just beat Castlevania Symphony of the Night finally. I'm just sad that I wasn't able to play that like in the way that I would like to have played it just like all the way through. I just got distracted by life, by other games, like for review and everything. It's just, it was kind of a bummer. I, I think it's excellent. I, I think it's one of the greats. I like it a little bit less than I did initially. Oh, really? You can cook bosses with, with certain abilities in the Mm -hmm. end. Like there's one that's like a cross that like will like go all around you and just, 
torch enemies. I was I was first trying bosses like every single time until the final boss. I got the the true ending. I think is what it what it would be called. Um, and that that did take me a few tries. Okay. But like it ended up just feeling like I was kind of just cheesing it anyways. Like it, like just being able to utilize that because I had a cloak on that would give me more hearts that would charge up that attack and uh, by getting hit. So if I got hit, I would get more hearts so I could do that attack and then just repeat the cycle and then just heal myself a couple times. Like. Okay, like it's fun, it's great. Like that—that that makes it sound like I'm more negative on it than, than I am in almost every other facet. Like it's like one of the best games yeah. of all time. But I just think the boss fights are too easy, um, and it goes on a li- little bit too long, a little bit too okay. long. But if you're playing that in in, in uh, the 1990s, like that amount of content and that amount to dig into must have been fucking mind blowing back in the day. I got a question for you and for the comments on YouTube. If I say a game is too long, what's the first game you think of? Um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Oh, uh, my answer is it takes two. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. we, we just all the time when we're shooting list videos, whenever it comes up, you mean Brady have all beaten this game. And so we all have that experience and all have the same opinion of it, it's it's too long. Yeah. Uh, you ready to hop in? Yeah. Uh, you're taking the first one. Sure. Why not? My video game hot take for this week is that God of War Ragnarok is an amazing game. Don't get me wrong. But it doesn't do anything the best in the series. What I mean by that is boss fights. You think about the boss fights from God of War 3, the story and the character dynamics. I personally lean on God of War 2018. There are so many great parts of God of War, but it it all feels a little bit lesser than in Ragnarok, than the previous entries. I love God of War Ragnarok. I think that it's a great title. There are certain moments in that game that got me emotional. Nothing got me as emotional, though, as uh, the moments in God of War uh, 2018. It, I just think that it is a step down, a clear step down from some of the pre- prior entries. And we need to take it as that. That It is great. It's it's an amazing video game. Don't get me wrong. There are some epic moments. But it did not cook the way that 2018 did. It did not have the rage and the scale of uh, some of the fights in uh god of war 3 and prior entry so yeah the god of war ragnarok an amazing game but uh, it's a hot take for a reason I, I think that it just doesn't do anything the best in the series as somebody whose first experience of the series was god of war 3 and then playing god of war 1 earlier this year and experiencing some of the, like the larger scale boss fights especially in 3 um that's the biggest downside to god of war 2018 and god of war ragnarok i wanted to fight something massive. There's one fight in God of War Ragnarok that I think gets close. Um, and we can talk about it off to the on. sizing. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That I think gets close to like the scale and, and, but like e- even then it's, it's, it's not where I want it to be. So I think that's a huge letdown personally. Like I want, I wanted that those, those God of War three moments and we're going to talk about boss fights later in this yeah. podcast. And, and I will be bringing up a, a God of War three one for sure. Um, so yeah, I, I just, I think from a story perspective, it's it's clearly not even close to 2018. So yeah, I, I think I think you're right on you. You, you um, didn't mention the the end game content. I think the Valkyries are like yeah. way better fights and way more interesting from like a story perspective than um, the end game bosses in uh, in Ragnarok. So yeah, I, I don't necessarily disagree on just about any of this. <laughs> I think Ragnarok is great. I think it's like a like an 8.5 yeah. 9 out of 10 i really about a nine. i really don't like the ending that much i like they lead up to this really climactic ending with ragnarok and then it just feels like more god of war rather than like this like really triumphant amazing set piece moment also the final boss like it has that same issue for me where it's like it's i just wish there was more scale to yeah. this, this fight like, I want to fight something big. That's what God of War is all about. Give me the big boys. <laughs> it, it, and even if it's not big, I think that the, the there's two fights in God of War, Ragnarok, the opening fight, the opening sequence. And I'm like, this is awesome. But and there's there's a moment in that fight that I'm like even thinking about. It's like full chills. Holy shit. Um, but I think that Balder even or especially God of War 3's opening size of that fight and everything like there's just multiple fights that i'm like even the opening's not as good as some prior entries and then the my favorite fight from that game uh is is like not a scale it's a person you know it's it's just like you're going against something that is the same sizing as you and feels cool but it doesn't look or 
have the punch of some of the other fights in the other entries. So yeah, that, that's where we're at. Do you know who I'm talking about with the big the big fight in in Ragnarok? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, um. All right. Good take. Thank you. My gaming hot take for this week is about something that I used to believe personally, and I have made a 180 on. People who say, I just don't like this kind of game. You don't like this kind of game yet, <laughs> is what I would say. You haven't found the right one. Because my proof of this personally is I used to think that I didn't like JRPGs. I didn't like, the, rather, I didn't like turn-based JRPGs. I was like, that shit's boring. And then I played a little game called Persona 5 and realized that a lot of these games just need time to really kind of wade you into the water. There's a lot of systems here, a lot going on when it comes to the mechanics. You need to get introduced to all of these things. It takes a while, sometimes 10 hours, which is unreasonable for a lot of people. But um, if you're willing to put in the work, put in the time to get through these these opening hours, like turn-based like it goes crazy like it's so fun and that is what introduced me to final fantasy like and and getting into the earlier final fantasy games and and so on and so forth that now that turn-based jrpgs are something i i actively search out and enjoy so if and, and it's the case with with anything i think this could be applied to there is a racing game out there that you will love if you are a if, even if you're not like a racing game fan or say like i just don't like racing games I promise you there, there needs to, there's gotta be one <laughs> for you. There's so many games and all of these genres that like, you just got to do the, the do the due diligence. Don't just write something off completely because you in the past have had a bad experience with something when it comes to a genre, give stuff a try, revisit stuff. I used to think that I didn't like salami as a kid. And now I, it's my favorite fucking, one of my favorite lunch meats. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like you need to be able to, to go back and, and revisit stuff that you thought you didn't like. Um, so yeah, I, I highly recommend it. <laughs> I highly recommend trying new things, even if you think you don't like them. Yeah. Game of genres is, interesting one because i think of my gaming experience uh growing up and everything and i liked action adventure games and that's just what i like to play and that's what i would spend my money on and now uh that i've gotten even further into my bag like fighting games are some of my favorite shit on the planet and it's not even just always playing them but i also love watching them uh i would say competitive shooters i never really cared about the competitive aspect of uh shooting games and then now i love valorant and that i never thought that that'd be the case so yeah try try things that you uh probably don't think you like but you might like because eventually you will especially fighting games fighting games are really cool all righty let's get into the playstation 5 pro everybody's excited everybody's happy we're all stoked on the PS5 Pro. No, uh, the internet is burning down and freaking out about this thing. This thing, people are not happy about it. We need to just bring it back. This is going to be one of those all-time takes for me that I'm going to bring up indefinitely on the podcast. And there, it reminds me of like the fantasy footballers have a thing at the start of every single year where they're like, here's the 10 tips and tricks for your season. This is my one trick for your lifestyle of video game framing. There's ups and downs, everyone. We just came off Astrobot. It's like this is the highest high we we're having this year, it feels like. And then we get this news, and it feels like it's doomsday. It's okay to just sit in the pocket and be like, everything is actually not that bad. We just have great things. We have things that are going to be not great. It's going to happen. It's okay. Deep breaths, everyone. Deep breaths. I just think there's a nuanced conversation to be had about this thing that people are just like, people are obsessed with the $700 price tag and I get it. It's expensive. Am I excited that it's $700? Did I want it to be cheaper? Absolutely. Like I don't want this to be $700, but I want aspects of this thing and I'm excited for it as somebody who's really ingrained in the PlayStation ecosystem and wants a better experience for games that I can literally point to and say, this would be better with this console games that I care about games that I really want. Like final fantasy seven rebirth, final fantasy seven rebirth looks like shit on performance mode it looks bad it is one of the biggest downgrades from from a fidelity to performance mode and if you can give me a ability to not have that option i want that so let's let's dig into these real different quick aspects. though it is not just one of i think it is the biggest downgrade ever and for me i decided i'm not playing that game in performance mode I'm the other way where I'm like, I really want to play this thing in performance mode, but I don't want it to look like shit. Just don't right. give me the choice and make it look great and also give me 60. And that it seems like this is going to be able to do that. And, and I'm, I'm not very happy about and it. And don't be delusional. Like there's still going to be games that run at 30 frames per second oh, yeah. on, on PS5 pro. Like, Oh yeah. 
apparently Hogwarts Legacy during that trailer was running at 30 frames for oh. like the sizzle reel. People pointed that out. So that's interesting. But uh, let's dig into the different aspects. Like I said, $700 comes out November 7th. It's attempting to remove that middle ground between performance mode and uh, fidelity mode. Remove that choice. Just give you a more stable frame rate at a, at a higher visual fidelity. It was announced during a technical presentation with Mark Cerny which is maybe the worst decision I've ever seen from, from this company in a long time. Like this is not how you show this thing off do two compressed images in, in, in a dual screen thing you got, you had to either you had two options in my opinion with, with the announcement, either give it to digital foundry and let them do a whole breakdown on this is why this is better. This is how this is going to run better. This is how this thing works. Or you do a blog post and just kind of crap this thing out and like, let people be like, it's happening. If you want it, these are, these are the specs. Uh, this is what it is. Buy it. If you, if you want it, those are your two options in my opinion. Uh, I'm such a fan of that presentation because it's not a blog post. I understand that people there was fanfare about it. There was at least a little yeah. bit of fanfare about it and having some fanfare about it, let people like get their expectations to a certain level just to be let down tremendously. Those two images next to each other with Mark Sony, like talking about like the differences are laughably bad. I, like that is not how you show this off. Like PS4 pro even had like, like videos like comparison comparisons and it doesn't look as good as you need to see it to believe it. And that's how it was for the PS4 uh, to PS4 Pro, and I imagine that's going to be the case here. You need to have a direct comparison of having experience playing the PS4 and then me halfway through God of War 2018 switching over to PS4 Pro on my 4K TV and be like, yeah, that looks a lot better. Yeah, I understand that you need people on the sticks and you need a better explanation, but and I understand that there's fanfare behind it. I feel like most reasonable people that know the industry very well understand what that presentation was going to be. We discussed it beforehand. We we're like, we know what this is. This is not new announcements. This is not it. And now we're in a spot where the PS5 Pro is so marginally small of a jump from PlayStation 5 to PS5 Pro in the same way that the PlayStation 4 Pro to the PS5 didn't feel like this crazy huge fucking leap because that's just where we're at with technology now. It's the extra frames. It's the extra fidelity. It's the extra ray tracing. It's uh, AI upscaling. That's what we're talking about where it's not this huge leap. You really can't show it in a way. You can though. I, I seriously think that you can. I mean, Digital Foundry did a whole breakdown on, on trying to get a cop to the PS5 Pro and compare it between the PS5 and the PS5 Pro like specs, and you can see it. Like, I understand. It, would they you have just the ability die? to do it. Is what you, I'm saying. Would you rather them? No joke. Like you are Mr. Sony. Uh huh. How are you doing this? You're How are you? You're giving it to the Digital Foundry and letting them. And so you were do a saying. So, or, but like you're announcing it. You have to announce it somehow. You have to let people know about it. You do. You are do. You, a, do a, blog you do a blog post, post with the okay. Digital Foundry. Okay. Uh, breakdown. I, um, Otherwise, I like, the, the, the solution that they chose was the worst possible solution, in okay. my opinion. I, I disagree. Like, I that, don't think those, it's the worst. The, people are latching onto those those side by side comparisons and laughing because it is laughable. It looks ridiculous. This isn't what people are are really looking for, anyways. If you're like me, you're looking for better frame rates. Yeah. You're not looking for like more foliage detail. Like. I want the game to run better. <laughs> like that's what I am looking for. That's what is selling me on this. So, uh, yeah, and 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 it's going to run better because of the PSSR AI upscaling helping uh, take off some of the load to like then be able to be turned into uh, better frame rates. Um, I will say I'm a novice when it comes to technical aspects. We, we are getting are. we are getting information from Digital Foundry um, that they did a whole breakdown on this yes. thing. And, and other uh, pundits talking about the PS5 Pro. If so. there is a technical aspect, we pulled it most likely from Digital Foundry or a different article, but mainly the Digital Foundry breakdown. Just a heads up where you're wondering, where where the fuck do they see this? That's where we saw And it. for the comparison to PC, uh, they said that it's a uh, Digital Foundry said that it's comparable to an RTX uh, 4070, which they say on Amazon right now is going to put you out 550 at the, at the least for just the graphics card. Yep. So... Uh, Real quick, though, let's all take a deep breath before we continue on with this conversation. We're all on the same team. We're all gamers. We all have to buy this thing and figure it out. Uh, our company plan is we're we're buying one for yeah. the company. Like no matter well, what, we're we buy, will. We're interested in buying it for coverage. We, first yes, of all, for for coverage purposes, and there will be we. But also, then there's personal interest. We'll discuss and everything. But we. We'll be spending 
seven hundred dollars of money to get a ps5 pro we are not just bypassing this by i think it's important to say with something like this of the conversation will we will be having we will discuss the negatives we will discuss the positives we are not just saying this as somebody that is a uh, like even if we do get sent them we also have our own skin in the game but even if we didn't have our own skin in the game like we are going to be discussing the highs and the lows of this in a way that uh we actually care about and understand the nuance of seven hundred dollars going into this regardless of if i was in the industry or not i would be buying this is, yeah. is what i will do, say do i bought the ps in there? i bought the ps4 pro um shortly after launch because i wanted the best possible experience playing my ps4 games it's the same thing here and even if it's marginal like it was on ps4 pro it is noticeable and it is important and does make the experience better it's the same people who say that this this isn't like worth it are the same people like half the time who are buying new new uh graphics cards for the pc like every two three years that that costs like an arm and a leg so it's just so confusing and then on the, the other side of it though if you're somebody that doesn't go and upgrade those things you do have upgrades that you make in your life well you might be somebody that goes and upgrades your car every couple of years somebody that upgrades their phone every couple of years and yeah. spends that extra few hundred bucks and as somebody that both of our lives this are is my thing video you games. know what i mean like yeah. this is what i like to invest my my uh extra money on like this is this is my enthusiast product you know i, I would mean? also like to throw out that the initial conversation i had with myself was i was like would i do this and i was like probably not because i i just like don't spend a lot of money on a lot of things like this is a nice thing to have but then even thinking about it and the discussion i had with myself when it came to the playstation 5 it was will i get one eventually yes might as well get it right away ps5 pro it was like will you get one eventually I'm going to see Rebirth be played at 60 frames with great graphics. And I'm like, I'm going to need one of those bad boys. And the big part for me is I do own a PS5. So I will be trading in my one to go and get it. And so it is in a full $700. People are really upset about that that factor, it seems like, online. That like, oh, just sell your old PS5. It's like, I think that's just a good deal. Like, I think, yeah. I think that's just smart business. It'd be like, it's not $700. It's more like 400 because you can trade in your PS5. It's like, yeah, I mean, like, I don't see why that's, uh, that yeah. wouldn't be the case. I, somebody that went and uh, upgraded from my PS4 to my PS5, my PS4 has been collecting dust and I've not touched it. And I said that I was going to go and like use it for other things. And maybe, Hey, we need, uh, we're, we're doing a stream. Let's go and, have uh two Fortnite games going at once and let's just pull the ps4 out it's like no i just have you bring your ps5 over so now or a switch like, or yeah whatever. or whatever so it means that if you're going and up if i were to upgrade from the playstation 5 and it spend 700 dollars, i'd be dumb not to sell my old ps5 because it just doesn't make sense to not yeah and and i want to drill down this on this a little bit let's let's talk about the reception of it people are not happy of course yeah i think you have the right to not be happy i'm yes. not excited that this is $700, but it is a luxury item. If you are upset about the $700 price tag, if you're upset about the lack of a disc drive and you're upset about the, the vertical stands not being included, which I think are all perfectly valid things to be upset about. Don't fucking buy it. Send the message to Sony that you don't want this, that, that it's not worth it to you. Like vote with your wallet on this. Don't buy the PS five pro. If you're very angry about this, but I hate to break it to you guys. This thing's going to sell decently well it's going to sell out it is uh, the day one pre-sales are going to go up it is going to be difficult to get one i their, firmly believe their that. projections apparently are on the same level as the ps4 pro it's going to sell 5 10 12 million which is a fraction of how many ps5s there are going to be like base ps5s and this doesn't take away from your ability to just play base ps5 base games on base ps5 are going to be great choosing performance mode I, I've had a great experience for the most part, just playing performance mode, getting steady frames. Games look really good for the most part. I just I would like the option to play the game at the best possible in the best possible light in the best possible way. So that's why I'm interested in this. But if you want to be, to be involved in the PS5, uh, the PlayStation ecosystem, just go buy a base PS5. There is no reason to buy the the uh, the PS5 Pro. This thing is entirely unnecessary. It, unless you are like this hardcore PlayStation fan, somebody who who mainly plays their games on PlayStation Five and wants to have a better experience, that's who I am. Yeah. That's what I want. And and my issue with the reception is that I feel like even having any interest in this thing is met with a lot of vitriol and a lot of like just like 
this thing sucks. We, we are not supporting this. It's like, that's fine. If you feel that way, like I'm, 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 you voice your like voice what you need to voice. Don't buy the thing. But for me, I'm interested in it. Yeah. So I'm going to buy it. I think that when you're having a objective discussion about it, there is some things that are just like, really? Okay. It's, it's tough. What do you mean by that? The the stand comes to mind where it's like, okay, oh. can you just throw in the piece of plastic for uh, like just thirty bucks too is ridiculous. Yeah, like just put please come on. Let's let's, let's drill down on the disc drive real fast. Do you have any take on that? Um, on the digital I, versus I, 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 I know that you do. Can I just get finished yeah. with the point that I was on though first? I bet. Um But we're there are the gamer sickos. Andy Cortez said it so fucking well on kind of funny that the, he brought up like eight reasons why this thing is a tough sell. And then he's like, but I'm a sicko. So I'm going to buy it. Cause I like having the new nice tech. And that is sort of where I lean at this point of my life where I'm like, I don't drive a nice car. I don't like really ball out on a lot of things. I'm a big trip person. And I like, uh, I like video games. That's what I do. Like I mm-hmm. like spending time with my friends and I like video games. And so with that, I'm going to get the nice thing. Cause I, this is what I really enjoy. And so if you don't, if that's not there, if that value proposition that we always bring up, the money needs to make sense in your mind. And for both of us, it makes sense. So we do have some level of excitement. We are excited to get those extra frames. Are we excited to spend money on this and have to go and shell out the cash? No. Who would be? Like, it's an extra expense. It's an extra thing that you have to spend money on. That sucks. But I am excited for the product. But I'm fucking excited for the product. I'm excited to get the new thing. The first thing that I'm going to do on November 7th is boot up Final Fantasy uh, 7 Rebirth. And I'm at the point that I'm like, I'm re- like, I probably will be on the review for Assassin's Creed Shadows. I'm like, I don't even know if I want to be, though. I just want to play it's Rebirth. Be, yeah, I, well... Assassin's Creed Shadows has enhancements on yeah. PS5 Pro. I'm stoked on that. Like, yeah. it's going to be cool to play new games that like are going to run and play better on the PS5 Pro uh, at launch. And I think that, that and that's I, interesting. I also to me. do I'm think sorry. Uh, there is the, the company value that we can discuss, and I do think that it is cool and important to be like. Brady played this on uh, PS5. I played it on PS5 Pro. Connor played it on his PC or whatever yeah, yeah. amalgamation of that. It, there is some extra value to that. And so that's cool that we get to go and have that discussion and get excited about it because, I mean, I'm excited. Like, I'm right. legitimately pretty stoked on this one. And then let's talk about the no disk drive aspect. Yes. Uh, you have to understand that it's it's over. Like, as somebody who clearly likes physical media, likes owning their games... It's over, guys. I'm sorry. Like Capcom recently put out their their financials, which revealed that something like 93% of their sales are digital. It's over. It, we can we can kick and scream and 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 say that we want our our own uh, physical copies. And I think in some capacity there will always be an option to plug in a disc drive and and have that option. But like the PS6, the next Xbox console. It's going to be the same thing with with an attachable disk drive. PS7, absolutely the fuck not. It is not going to happen. It will be a digital console, and we just need to understand that. Like, I I'm sorry. Like, we have, we are losing the war on this one. It is happening, whether we, we like yeah. it or we like it or not. It is happening. So like, I'm not saying like don't complain about it, don't kick and scream and and fight into the night on this one, but like. I'm sorry. It's it's over. Like this is just this is just another notch in the belt that it's all going to come unraveled. It's done, guys. Like I'm sorry. Yeah, but. it's tough. Uh, I really do enjoy our discs that we go and get. But even when we started this company, we were like, let's every opportunity we can new game releases. Let's get it on disc for the back wall. Let's do that. And slowly but surely, it's. I want to play the game at midnight and I don't want yep. to go and drive to games a, a stop. And I, I like, maybe they don't have a midnight release or anything. And I, I just want to play the game. Black Myth Wukong comes out. I just, we just want to get after it. That's digital only. That actually is a really bad example. Um, But any new release, it's just like Final Fantasy seven rebirth. I was like, Brady, please get a physical fucking copy. It's like, I don't really want to. I'm like, I know you don't want to, but I want one for the set. Like, please get after them. So we, we do that. But it, we have even more incentive than the average consumer, not only just to build out a cool ass collection, but literally it's part of the set and people love the set and we, even we do it less than we probably should. Like, it, So it's a losing battle. The convenience is too large for the consumer. It's too large for uh, the publishers where it's just like, oh man, it's nice that we don't have to press it and deal with 
uh, big box realtors. And I this, wish it would like, be cheaper because of that, but it's never going it's, to. It's never going to. And so that's just the case. It, it sucks. It's yeah. really difficult. There's also the, the factor of ownership that people like to talk about. People like to own their games. They, they don't feel confident that these digital storefronts are always going to be there or the licenses aren't going to run out and they're going to pull games from uh, digital stores like we saw with Spec Ops Align earlier this year. Like That is a perfectly valid fear. I'm afraid of that. I don't like it. But why do people not talk about that with Steam? Yeah. That I mean, like, people love Steam. People love their PCs. That's every but every time you're talking about consoles, you always have somebody yapping in your ear about why don't you just get a PC? PC is so much better. It's like I get it. Like I understand. And like, you're but also you're somebody that owns a very nice own, PC. A very so nice like, PC. It's <laughs> like, like and you get I still it. play on my yeah. PS5 more than I play on my PC. So there's that aspect but like i just don't understand like why steam is so beloved and there's no physical games on on pc and, and there's there's no the sky is falling type of rhetoric over there about digital games but for for playstation and xbox and and console gaming everybody's like it is it is we're cooked it's over like they're gonna take all of our games from us like it's- i get being worried about it but like I think Sony will be around in some capacity and I will have access to my digital library for the rest of my life. I do. Th- yeah. I do believe that. I understand that there is a possibility that that is not the case. And I understand that worry and I understand being worried about it. But like I, I struggle with like even as somebody who loves physical games on like really weighing. I, I, I buy digital. I'm almost all digital on PS5. Like I bought a disk drive for the PS5 Pro just to like have it because I have a back catalog of PS4 and PS5 games, but I think I have like three PS5 games uh, physical, and that's it. And yeah. like, I don't know, like, it's just weird to me. I, I I think the whole conversation, like, I get it, but I just I think that we just need to get ready it's to move on because you're taking the candy away, Connor. Yeah, the candy's here. We already got the candy. We like our candy. We like our physical games. We like the option of that. And now you're taking away the option. And even though it's an option that Capcom is saying 92% of people don't take anyways. The, there is a lot more than the 8% that's getting upset about that. Mm-hmm. There's people that just want to be mad because the option is going away. And honestly, I think that that's not fair. I think that we need to, like, once again, is this what we're really going to get upset as gamers about? Like, yeah. there's so many things that we can actually get upset about, whether it is studio closings and that affecting people's lives or uh, the way that certain, like, game devs are treated. And stuff. just, like, actual important stuff. No, and I, think and this, I disagree yeah. that this is important. I think this is important to talk about. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, no, no, I, no. Sorry, sorry. I think that it's important to talk about, and I think that it is. Uh, it, you're allowed to get upset about it. Yeah, and like, I'm just saying it's over. <laughs> it, it, I, I think, though, that this is not the hill that I personally feel the need to die right. on, and... So when it is discussion of no disk drive, I'm just like, would every single consumer rather have a disk drive for the same exact price? Yes. That that's a fact. I don't think anyone would want something like to have less when you can have more. But that we also have to think about the way that the console is made, and that that probably adds money to the manufacturing process. And then they guess what? I. If there was a disk drive on this thing and then it cost 800 bucks, I wouldn't be shocked. Like, that also is a oh, world 100% that exists. Co- I mean, it technically just costs 800 bucks anyways. It, exactly, but like, if that were the case. And so. But they couldn't charge $800 for a console. Like, they could not do that. People would lose their I, minds. I felt like they couldn't charge 700 until they did. Yeah. Well, L- like, I I was a firm believer that this was 600 or 650. Yeah. I didn't think I mean, that the they were going to go totally different if it was 650. I haven't even thought about that. I've thought about six hundred and seven hundred. I've not thought about six fifty. I think the conversation. I think people would still be mad at six hundred. I think people would be mad no matter what. I, I think <laughs> about this thing. Yeah, this was always going to be a tough sell. Uh, people like being upset when it comes to video games. Yeah, and yeah. it it's right. definitely a uh, that there's part of why we try to remain like just generally positive guys when we're talking about things. Even the negative, we try to just like uh, almost do the news reporter thing of like we can talk about really negative shit, but let's at least uh, have that energy and have some excitement compared mm-hmm. to just doom all the time. And but this is, in my opinion, one of those. If it was six fifty, shrugging the shoulders, it's okay. It's okay. Right. It's all right. The people would still be upset. I think that seven hundred almost makes sense for this thing with what they're offering. And I know that they could offer more and that it would be nicer if they offered more, but we are talking about an extra terabyte of uh, storage. People need to remember though. A large amount of consumers are Fortnite, call of duty 
and then GTA consumers. That's mm-hmm. what they're playing. And I have genuine worries that a one terabyte PS5 will not be able to run the next Call of Duty with Warzone and GTA. I think that there's a chance that those two games take up more than a fucking terabyte of space because they're going to be goofy big download sizes. We need to go in. And so a second terabyte allows that general consumer if they really want to. And I know that there's certain people that are shrug your shoulders consumers that only they're like, I kind of, yeah, sure. I'm just going to go and get the nicer thing. And I'm just going to do it anyways, even the, though the I don't idea that, want to. The, when it comes to the sales of this thing, like, like you're saying about the shrug your shoulders, like if you're already going into a GameStop and you're, and you're not like hardcore into games and you have the option between the 450, the 500, $700 option. And they're like, this is the base option and as a disk drive this this uh seven hundred dollar uh, option it's gonna run your games better um it's the most powerful option you're already spending a bag on a, on a bunch of stuff they're, they're gonna get somebody they're gonna get some people who are like yeah fuck it Wait, like I, i'm here i'm gonna I, I might as well just buy the best possible option so i don't have to upgrade anytime soon just give me the fucking best thing that's what happens to people when they go into apple stores i i've gone into apple stores and have been like i want the the this this phone they're like for like 50 more bucks you might as well just buy the, the newest option or whatever how and like, it's definitely not 50 bucks but like uh for for whatever increasing it's like i'm already spending like a ton of money yeah. and i just want i might as well just get the best thing and 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 they've gotten me on that i know that that's like a very like specific type of situation i know that there's economic struggle like all over the world right now it's really tough times that's why with this item i'm not recommending this to yep. fucking anybody that, that, that actually should probably have been the headline yeah. of this whole thing both of us uh, talked about this of like I feel uncomfortable recommending this to someone. Yeah. $700 for a console is a lot of fucking money. And consoles and video games already are just like extra entertainment and are a blessing to have. And it's it's a nicety. It's not a necessity. But for I, a lot of people, it's it's not. Like they, they people like rely on video games for, oh, for their well, entertainment yes. and happiness and everything. And like, and to fill that, that void, that time that you have in your afternoons after work and, and on your weekends. And, and for those people, I, I think the, like I said earlier, the PS5 is a great option. Like, that, and, that's I think it's, thing. it's a more affordable option. It's still really expensive. $500 but, is expensive. But, but if like, I were to go and recommend somebody a console nowadays and a price point is an issue, the first thing I'm saying is here's the digital PlayStation 5 or the you, switch or, or, or the switch or I'm going to say a dirty word here, everyone. Xbox Series S. <laughs> like, yeah. if you want to get in on the next generation of consoles for a very cheap amount and with a good ass controller, Series S is a great box. Yeah. Like, we we need to remember that these are awesome things that we are all really excited about, and like the it's video games. But we, I I think that we're the headline of this is we're both excited. We both will be getting one. Uh, but. We don't recommend this. This isn't a, hey, you should go out and buy this because I think we both are like, this is a ridiculous price point for a console. Like I said earlier. But I'm a sicko. If the $700 is like, you're like, that's too much. Like, just don't buy it. Like, like, but, and and I support you on that. (laughs) Like, I I think, I think if you, if you're not super interested in this thing and you think the price is too high, then, then I, I agree with you. (laughs) Like, but, but I don't think you should look, I don't think. The general sentiment towards people who are interested in it should be like, don't support the greedy company. Don't support uh, like Sony's like uh, nickel and diming and, and charging for everything. It's like, I, I understand that and I get that sentiment, but like I am interested in this thing and yeah. I'm excited for it. So like, don't yuck my um, I want you to yuck we, your um, So We haven't talked about the consumer though. That, and I have seen a few of them that are normal, really nice people that are just generally excited about certain things. And the conversation of, oh, I was interested in this and it's not... At a price point that is reasonable. Mm-hmm. Like I, I would, if it was six hundred, be okay with selling my PlayStation Four or a PS Five, getting a few hundred bucks back, and then like around that two fifty area of like, okay, I get three fifty back. It's a two fifty more. I can make that upgrade for four more years of the best version of gaming. Now it's three fifty more. It is that almost. It feels like Nintendo Switch is coming out next year, probably with another console that I assume my number is four hundred that I think it's going to cost. I can either upgrade or get a whole new fucking console for an extra 50 bucks. That is a tough conversation. That is a steep that feels a little bit too far, especially when it is. I There is going to be a lot of people. I assume there, if any game could, it will be GTA 6 to be like, I want to upgrade my PlayStation to get the best version of it. I don't think there's a ton of consumers that are in that mindset of I need the best thing. So I like I want it just for GTA. But I know that there are some that are like, I care a lot about GTA. I'm going to upgrade to the nicest thing possible. And I guess what? 
But all the people that are pounding the drum on PC, being like, you need a PC, just get a PC instead. There are so many people that are so stoked for GTA 6, and it's not on PC day one. So if you're going to get that console, there are people that are like, I want to play GTA. I have a really nice PC. I have a super nice PC. There are people that are like, I will never, ever, ever, ever touch a console. GTA 6 comes out, it's like, oh, it might be console time for, yeah. for me. Like, that's just to go and get it uh, right away. It, it is a fun discussion to have. Uh, but I, I'm just, I'm in the boat. I, mean, I get fired up about this stuff. It, it was an awesome day of just talking to you and the community it's on Tuesday. It is super fascinating. Even if you don't like it, it's interesting. Yeah, like, it, if you don't like what the result is, it's fun to talk about the, the conversation surrounding it, the console, like how it's all going to go our predictions for, for what it's going to, how it's going to do like sales wise, I think is interesting. Um, you did talk about the PC a uh, bit for a little bit, but I, I mentioned earlier RTX 4070. I, I do want to say to the crowd that that's like just buy a PC. And, and that's, I've seen that, that echoed online. Like you cannot get a PC for this price with this, these specs. Like it's not happening at a bare minimum. The number I've heard is 1200 bucks. Yeah. Bare. And that is, bare minimum to make sure that you're actually getting the output you want from the 4070 is around 1200 and so i I, and i'm just gonna throw it out there more likely if you're going in if you're somebody that's hey i'm gonna spend 1200 bucks i'm gonna go and try to get like something nice you're gonna get something you're not gonna just want to spend 1200 you're gonna want the thing that's actually nice you're gonna spend 1500 you're gonna spend 2000 and so all of a sudden you have this option let's just go back to 1200 dollars hey I really want to get into gaming. I really want something nice. I, you can go twelve hundred, or you can go seven hundred. And guess what? Seven hundred, you also get exclusives that right. are some of the best titles in gaming. We did a a, a list, and uh, out of all those games, there was multiple PS PlayStation exclusives. Just in general, those exclusives in that library is really enticing for certain gamers too. Yeah, and some people might say, "Well, they come to PC, and it's like." I'm not waiting a year to play God of War Ragnarok. I'm sorry. Like I'm not waiting a year to play the next Naughty Dog game or two years or whatever it is. Like I respect your your patience. I think that's very impressive. Uh, like if yeah. you if you can be a patient gamer, there's a whole subreddit dedicated to being a patient gamer. I love that subreddit. I think that's really impressive. As somebody who's an enthusiast, especially now that like I'm I'm talking about video games like online and yeah. to be up to date and everything. It's like I'm not waiting a year to play Sony first party games. It's never going to happen. Yeah, I'm never I'm never going to want to do that. And that that's why that they got me. You know, like I'm I'm going to always be in the PlayStation ecosystem forever unless there is drastic changes. Yeah. Um. Will I always be happy <laughs> or I always will I always think they make the right choices? Absolutely not. I I am I am critical of the price point. I'm critical of um of the way that they showed it off. I'm critical of the lack of a disk drive and the lack of a stand. I think there's serious problems with this, but I am interested in it. I do want it. And I think that's, that's perfectly reasonable personally. Yeah. Uh, I think that we're both on the same page on that. Uh, I don't have too many more points on this. I, I, I do just want to remind everyone headline statement. We're both kind of disappointed with a lot of aspects of this. We both will be purchasing one. Uh, we're, we're trying to figure out exactly how that's going to work. Um, uh, as as a company and stuff like that but we as a company will be buying one we will have a ps5 pro november 7th is the plan uh unless they sell out so fast that we're not even able to uh grab one um from a realtor and, and we'll do a review and we'll we'll give you the the take and and if i could bet any amount of money i would tell you that i'm, I'm gonna probably end up where i am right now is this is a nice to have Games run better and look better on it. It's entirely unnecessary. I would only recommend it to a very small subset of people who are really interested in this kind of tech, really interested in playing their PS5 games at the at the top of the line. And that's about it. I think in three weeks uh, after this this thing launches and and does pretty well and and when uh, well sorry more time than that. Uh, but three weeks after the launch of this thing, nobody's going to be mad about it. It's yeah. just gonna it's just gonna exist. It's gonna be out there. But like the PS5 is still gonna be the, the dominant console, the base uh, PS5. So. I'm gonna throw out the fact that I think that this state of play that we're about to predict is gonna happen and then it's gonna be we're back, baby. Right. Who gives a shit? Yeah, hey, I, cause I, that's that's I, how it goes. It's the highs and lows of the industry and we need to be okay with now that we're having this low discussion, 
be like, okay, let's not get too low because we understand that the high is going to come. Right. And then when the highs are happening, this is just a little bit of life advice. When the lows are happening, don't get too low because the highs will come. And then when the highs are happening, really fucking enjoy the highs. Yeah. I mean, for me, the, for the high low conversation, I think the PS5 Pro as a console, as a as thing, is, is a, at the very least right in the middle. It's, a, it's just kind of a moot point. It's just like, nah, cool. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's the only natural reaction to like the actual console. The, the, the visceral reaction comes from the price and like the other aspects and the way that it was revealed, in my opinion. I so. will throw out, it, it will be extremely nice. I have had to, this entire year, delete games consistently I never, I, off my yeah. space. I will throw out the fact that the first thing I'm going to do when I get that PS5 Pro is I'm going to download Fortnite, which is it's not a huge game. It's, I think it's around 100. Um, it, that can be completely wrong. It might only be 60, but I think it's about 100 um, gigs. I I love Warzone. I uh, Every single time I hop back into Warzone, I, I love it. I have a great time with it. I'm going to download Warzone. I haven't been able to enjoy downloading Warzone in the same way that Fortnite is my... I'm, I'm going to do something real quick. It's Tekken and Fortnite. I play Tekken real quick or I play Fortnite real quick for the past few weeks. And I love that. So I, I just... There is that aspect for me where it's not even just that it's nice. It's, oh, I'm actually going to be able to keep certain games downloaded. If right now somebody from our community is like, hey, you got 33 minutes. You want to hop in to play Helldivers? I'd be like... I don't have hell that's downloaded. Like just I, I just run out of storage. Mm-hmm. And that that is a for me and you as people that play a fuck ton of games on this PlayStation, all of those uh multiplayer games, and I play a lot of multiplayer games, all of them I have to consistently download to get the next expansion. Black Myth comes in, it's a hundred gigs. I'm like, well, I'm deleting two games that are of the multiplayer variety. I and so it's it's tough. I'm really excited for that aspect of it. That is something I felt like wasn't discussed uh, in our regular conversation. Do you have any more points on the PlayStation 5? Um, just the last thing that I want to say is that I, I am, you have to be extremely sympathetic to like the times that we're in right now and the economic struggles of, of like the world, just generally speaking. And, and the $700 is like people, people are, are pinched for money and, and $700 is a lot of money. Like yeah, sure. I am totally, I think people are totally justified in, 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 having sticker shock on this thing. So I just want to say that real fast that like I, as somebody who is interested in this and, and excited about it, I'm not excited about the $700, but I am sympathetic to the general sentiment about the price point. So just want to leave it on that. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how this, this all pans out, how it sells um, and, and how much better it is based off of what you've seen. I think it's, it's a nice to have little bump and I'm excited about it, but I, I generally understand the sense the sentiment that, People are not excited about it, but I, I would take a step back and, and say, like, I've never seen something have so much vitriol about it online, like, immediately. And I think that over... From a the, price point. Just, or just generally, like, about the, the comparisons of okay. the, the uh, how it was shown off, about the price point, about the disk drive, about, like, almost every aspect of it. Like, it's... If this was the new PlayStation console, if this was the PS6 have at it like i think those are like way big issues for the next console and i think that if you uh, if you're like this if, if you fear for that future that these aspects are going to come up again in the future that the price point is going to be too high like don't buy this thing like like i i totally get that sentiment but i just think that taking this item in a vacuum knowing what we know about it, like this thing is so inconsequential to to the average consumer to the average playstation base that like it's it's fine <laughs> this guy is not falling over playstation it's fine uh, last question i'm going to ask you uh, a quick one and i'll throw in a little caveat just to make it a little bit clearer playstation 6 switch 2 and then if or whatever they do xbox if, if you can say they don't do anything and that can be an answer give me the price of the next gen right now it can be completely wrong and that's fine switch to 350 to 400 at the, at the maximum um Xbox and PlayStation, I think they both, well, it was they uh, Xbox didn't do a, a two tier other than like the, the, a huge drop down with the Series S. I think they ditched that model for the future. I think there's one console for the Xbox future, and I think that's six hundred dollars. And I think that in the future for PlayStation, it's a it's a discless five hundred and a uh, disc six hundred dollar. I think disc uh, PlayStation, you nailed it. Disc six hundred base 500 so hey you can play the next gen for 500 still Mm -hmm. um i think that xbox will have three things there there will be their 600 console there'll be their 400 console that's like a series s even though it's 
brutalize their company in certain ways of uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is the one that comes up to mind often and then having to go and develop your first party to be able to run very well on both is obviously extra work and then uh lastly i do think that they have a handheld for uh, Sorry, well, another handheld 500 yeah uh, in my opinion uh, yeah that, oh hopefully i uh, that that's important in my opinion that There's, is the next that is the next area of gaming <laughs> that's another fact of like everything that we think is overpriced for playstation that is totally unnecessary that you're like who is this for like keeps selling over there the dual sense edge is 200 dollars. it's way overpriced it sells really well the playstation portal I uh, is literally just like a a remote play device that you can do on your phone with like a backbone for cheaper and it's it is selling exponentially well like it is selling really really well and I assume that that's what's gonna happen I, I, here. I'm gonna throw it out there I'm like I really want a portal oh, the, why oh dude dude I, I'm not playing a game on a portal ever like even I, if there is a minuscule a minuscule uh input lag I do not want to play it for me it is uh I want that indie machine. What do you? You have a this, switch. I, 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 that's the thing. The switch goes away every now and then. Yeah. I just want something that I can go and sit back. Literally, I'm like, can you understand? I was exhausted yesterday. I get off content. I take a nap, grab food, set up, go, go hop in bed. And all I wanted to do was close my eyes and, and get sleep. But if I had a portal, I would have the portal up and I would be remote playing Undertale and starting that pacifist run last night. If I had that option, I, I don't have the use case for it personally. I have no problem with sitting on my desk or sitting on the couch playing games. I just, yeah, no issues on my end. All right. Hopping into our PlayStation state of play predictions. Now, um, this is like we said earlier, rumored. So we don't know the exact timing on it, but we want to get it out now because we want to make sure that we have these out with ample time for people to watch it think over it and then uh, enjoy the state of play. So we're doing it this week. Um, we do our predictions off of a lock, a lengthy and a long shot lock is something we think is for sure going to happen. Lengthy is something that uh, we go into detail on, have a bunch of caveats on and, and try to hit as many points as we possibly can. And a uh, long shot is something that is so out of left field. It's almost definitely not going to happen, but we think could happen. Um, so yeah. Do you want to kick it off Nick with your first or do i go first you, you go first okay my lock is that death stranding 2 will get a release date new trailer early 2025 uh, i think in spring like yeah. th th not not e not into the uh into the summer season but so yeah. i've said this for a long time i don't know why feels like an april game yeah april feels, april feels March. like an april yeah. game um i love it uh i don't have any death stranding on my board uh so i i like that being your lock, uh, TGS, them doing a panel, they said that there's going to be no new information or anything like that uh, from that panel. Um, Wait, is TGS supposed to be before or after this? I believe after. Okay. It's at the very end of September. Um, so I think that's an interesting conversation of can it show up, show out, and uh, be exciting? Yes. Would it break my brain? Absolutely. Here's the fun part of playing through the Metal Gear Solid game so, since January. January, that trailer releases for death Stranding 2 and i'm like that's the cool shit i've ever seen in my entire life legitimately we've discussed it too many times on this podcast but now i am like oh it's just another he's just still in his bag he's just doing more shit he's not doing new shit he's doing more shit kojima you're a treat i love you dude yeah. like, i feel like this is like the most obvious thing that could could happen um since we saw it in uh early earlier this year. it's uh january 24th yeah and, and i feel like it's been five years since the release of Death Stranding. Almost, it's time. I feel like I feel like next year, early next year, is is, is a safe bet. Also, we got a date at the very start of last year or this current year. Mm -hmm. It feels like the cadence sort of makes sense. You get the date, and then about a year, year. later, or sorry, you get the year, then uh, about a year later, or a little bit further in the year. It's been nine months now. Let's get the actual day it's going to come out on. And it, it looks makes far sense. in development too. Like we saw a lot a of lot. that game. So. I feel pretty confident. Like, this I believe it was like a seven minute trailer or yeah. something. It was a lot. So with, with gameplay, with finished cutscenes, long finished cutscenes, like I don't know. I feel like I feel like we're we're he's in his bag. I feel like we're about to get it soon. So yeah. How stoked would you be? What's the hype meter on that? I don't know. Like I'm I'm already so sold on it that like I probably don't even if I was not in the industry, I wouldn't even watch the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> so um because I'm already I'm already in. So. I I'm at like a five. 
on the hype meter. I I'm lo- I love Kojima, but it, Connor and I discussed so many times, like, if we do Death Stranding, what we do for content, how we do this, if we're not doing it for content, what I still do it, what, like, how does this happen? And uh, the result's been, I still might not play Death Stranding Dude, 1. it's so good. I know. You're not playing Death Stranding 2 without playing Death Stranding Connor 1. Connor has said that he would, if I started playing, like, Death Stranding 2 <laughs> in the background without playing Death Stranding 1, he would pick up the PS5 and throw out the window. I... <laughs> You're not going to know what the fuck is going on. Uh, there, there's recap videos. All right. It's not going to make sense in a recap video That's either true. because like it's so all over the place. It doesn't place. make sense in the actual yeah. game, so it won't make sense in the recap You've video. you got to play the fucking game, though. All right. It's great. My first prediction, my lock, is that Ghost of Tsushima won't be there. I want to take a deep breath, everyone, and bring us to reality. All right? I know that you guys associate me with hype, but we've not heard anything about this. State of plays don't normally end in new game reveals. I feel like if it were to end, it would have a shit ton of gameplay and would have that 2025 date and give a good full look. I don't think we're there yet. I am not convinced that this is a 2025 uh, release yet. Jeff Grubb has said that it's a state of play, that it's not a showcase. That is what he uh, firmly believes. And if that's the case... This isn't the event for Ghost 2. This isn't the time that we see it. I think Ghost 2 even has a better shot to show up at Game Awards than a state of play proper, uh, even though it's Sony first party and everything. Ghost 2 feels a little, little bit too big for this one. It doesn't feel like the right time. I would be so happy to be wrong. I would be elated, but I don't yeah. think I'm going to be wrong. I don't have a prediction on this, uh, but I would say that I think there's a solid chance that that it happens. I think the cadence and the way that state of plays have have been directed, like go back to that January state of play. That's a showcase. Yeah. Whether you like, like they might have called it a state of play, but that was a full on showcase. It ended with like a drone shot of Kojima and Herman Hulse shaking hands after announcing the new tactical espionage game from Kojima. It's like. That that had production value to it. Like go watch an old state of play. It looks nothing like what yeah. we saw in January. And then and then the smaller state of play in um in June when we saw Concord and Astrobot. Oh yeah. Uh that that was that had a it was smaller, so it wasn't as high high budget, but it was it was clo- it, it was closer it, to the, the former than the last. We also are getting to the point that we're getting away from the disembodied voice. Right. We are now having somebody come out and it does look in the same way that they talk to us in 2021, 2023, like a showcase. Like, they, there's, they're starting to blend the lines a little bit. And I don't I, think they should have showcases anymore. I think it should just be called State of Plays. They're trying to do that, I think, with all of these. They're just trying to move towards, uh, like, just having some gravitas with State of Plays based off of what we saw in January. Like, you don't need to have two different skews of this thing. Like, oh, this one's the lesser one. This yeah. one's the big one. Just have State of Plays. If that's the case, and I hope it is, then... I hope that they say it's a 45 minute state of play. And I hope that it's 45 minutes. Like when they do the blog post, 45 minutes state of play, it also includes first party. How long was the one in January? I can pull that up. It was like 30 something minutes. It, it was, I can live with 30 minutes. I can live with 40 minutes. Like that's fine. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I, I think with the conversation around the PS5 Pro being so ne- negative right now, you got to get some goodwill back, just like they did with Concord to ask her about whether that was planned or not. That's what happened. A lot of the conversation around PlayStation like immediately turned back to positive, talking about Astrobot, And then now with the PS5 Pro, they need, they need some goodwill. You talk about Ghost 2, people are excited again. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, yeah. It was 42 minutes. I also want to shout out the fact that I believe yeah. that you gave that presentation like a 7.5 out of 10. I forget. I, I, I just want to throw out the fact that even thinking back of what that content was in like Rise of the Ronin, Stellar Blade, Death Stranding 2, Judas, uh, Silent Hill 2, just so many fucking games of consequence. I I do want to... Uh, There's a lot of updates, not a lot of reveals yeah. other than Death Stranding. So now let's go and dial it back and be like, can we just enjoy... I, I, I That's where I'm still at though. That felt awesome. That felt great. I don't think we get a lot of reveals. It's not talking about whether or not I think that it's cool that they they show updates or not. It's it, or like if I like it. It's talking like business sense. Like this the is conversation marketing. about Sony and PlayStation is that the PlayStation Five has no games. I fundamentally disagree with that take. I think it's a ludicrous take. I'm playing new shit on it all the time. Even if it's not exclusive, it doesn't mean that it doesn't count in the win column for PlayStation. But I digress on that. You need to start getting the conversation back about PS5 exclusives. We have a lot of good shit coming. 
game, 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 game. Start lining up those dominoes to be knocked down in the last three years of the PlayStation life cycle. I thought that would be the case back in January. Clearly was not. And then now that that Astrobot is out, I feel like now's the time. You have to start lining up the dominoes. I can't believe that we're at this point where where they haven't done it yet. I feel like we've been talking about Ghost 2 needing to be revealed for the last two years. Like, they need to show this game. I don't even care if it's close or not. You need to start showing people physical evidence that there is games coming out. Yeah. So we can stop having this stupid conversation about there being no games on PS5 while I'm literally drowning in games. My issue goes back to the fact that 2023 was the last time we got a proper showcase. And we've been waiting for the hammer to drop. And we have not seen that. The hammer didn't drop at the 2023 showcase. It, that's what I'm saying. We w- The expectations going to that 2023 showcase, the fever around it was Wolverine, uh, we expected to see. We expected to see potentially Ghost. What is Naughty Dog's next game? Like, what is uh, all these people that haven't gone yet in the generation for those dev cycles? Who's going? Who's going again? Like, how are we going to make this work? And, uh, they didn't do it because they went with a lot of uh, multiplayer games that a lot of people didn't have a lot of care for. And now we're wondering, when are we going to see certain titles again? And more importantly, when is the next get hype moment from PlayStation? It's Ghost 2, and I think that is at the showcase, personally. Okay. If, if uh, At the state of play. Yeah. It's, it's uh, yes, they're so the same thing. Um, they're, both sh- they're both showcasing video games. I, I think <laughs> they will never say showcase ever again when it comes to PlayStation, like presentations they'll always be so, so until in the playstation 5 generation because i think ps6 there might be future showcase whatever uh ps5 generation we're never going to use the word showcase again yeah i think they're all going to be called state of plays based off of the trajectory that we've okay. seen from the last couple that, I, that literally look and sound and are presented as showcases other than the fact that they have the state of play moniker over it that's all. i disagree mainly because we have had two of them if we only had one of them i'd be like okay but we've had two PlayStation showcases. showcases. Yeah. Um, I'm removing the 2020 ones before pre-release. So 2021, 2023. I think that it's important to come out swinging every now and then and say, this is our first party output. These are our third party partners. Let's rock and roll. But why does Nintendo not do it like that? Like Nintendo as a direct is a direct is a direct is a direct. If it's a proper Nintendo direct, they just go out there and talk. Because they have the sauce PlayStation in the, the directs. I think PlayStation has the sauce more so based off of the way that the last few have gone. And look and sound has the same amount of sauce uh, like, as, as Nintendo ones. D- directs have had things like just straight up bangers, like uh, Tears of the Kingdom, and like PlayStation a full has slate. the ability to do that. I, I feel like there has the, I've left directs being like, I'm so excited for this year and years beyond. I don't think I've ever left a state of play proper where I'm like, I'm excited for this year and years beyond, except. You love showcases that way. But I've left. Oh, yeah. But, I, these, are, I, but these are showcases now. Is no, what I'm no, but it, it, they need to be showcases. <laughs> Why? I, I, Why does they need the we, name Connor, showcase you're, above but it? You're, no, no. I'm saying that you're saying that this is just going to start happening. I'm like, but it hasn't happened yet. So I don't it believe it. It has happened. Yet. The January State of Play was a showcase. I, I don't think it was. It wasn't the, a very good one, but it was no, 40 no, no, minutes. It was 40 minutes. Where's the first party? You need first party. Uh, well, PlayStation own no you don't. Why does everything need to be first party? No, they, you don't. they showed off exclusives if that's all that really matters. Uh, yeah, People Sailor Blade, Rise of the Ronin, uh, and and Death Stranding. All are exclusive. Showcases need sauce, and that didn't have the sauce. It didn't have I, enough I sauce. I don't agree. Nick, it we, didn't have enough you sauce. You literally talked about having chills on your arm from Kojima uh, announcing something I five understand. seconds ago. And that I know, have the but sauce. It, it, the, the first party output is important. What, like When I talk about a PlayStation showcase, I think of dreams. I straight up think of Final Fantasy IX Remake, bro. I think of uh, oh, fucking that, Bioshock 4. Here. And it doesn't feel like that's the po- uh, a possibility with what we've been presented before. I think the ties are changing. Is what I'm I, I hope that they're changing, but I don't think they are. I think okay. that I think that we're gonna get. You wanna know what my take? Is? Well, it's too far. The, the certain bets and predictions are too far away. I I would bet in the next. I don't even want to say twenty twenty five, but I do think twenty twenty five we got a showcase. We're definitely not getting one this year. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, and I think going a full year, removing yourself from the the word. We showcase. did though in twenty twenty two. Oh, did we? Yeah, we didn't have one in twenty twenty two. All right, let's get back. To we the went September all the way to May, almost two full years without a showcase. Let's talk about my lengthy prediction. This is out. This was my long shot, and then I changed it. Nice. Yeah. Believe. Um, let me let me pull this up. 
For my lengthy prediction, Media Molecule, makers of Little Big Planet and Tearaway, announced their new title for PlayStation 5, and it's just simply called Little Big Planet. Off of the success of the whimsical Astrobot, PS will ride the high and bring back a beloved and quirky title. I feel like it's time. And, and Media Molecule shit the bed with dreams. It, like, it was cool tech. I think it's really interesting. The people who love it, love it. But they need to get back to their roots. They need to get back to the thing that people love them for. Little Big Planet was huge. It has a lot of nostalgia for it. It has a lot of applications that could end up being really interesting for people to really dig into. I think it's, the, the time is now. Give people the ability to make levels, make full games, take some of the tech from Dreams, and let people like go crazy with it. And maybe even upload their stuff to PC, have like a cross release there between pc and uh ps5 let people upload their games i love the idea of it there is already the marketing sense of like okay uh, astrobot is is different it is different they're, they're way far apart in my opinion especially a little big planet leans a little bit more 2d it, uh, yeah, it's so a game. i mean the sack boy big adventure yeah, is that, 3d but what, i think i think little big planet is is has a very high focus on creation rather than just straight up platforming. It is a really fun platformer, very whimsical platformer to boot. But I think that like the focus of that is creating levels and playing other people's levels. That's the point of this. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people pointing to Astrobot and being like, this is like a PS2 game. Like this is what I, what I really enjoyed like back from that generation. Like I think you can, Sony is seeing that and I, and I know that you can't pivot that fast, but I think that Sony clearly knows that they have something in that ballpark and they knew it when they were making Astrobot, and that's why they greenlit it. And with media molecule after doing like an eight year hiatus of making dreams for like 10 P the 10 people who played it, they're probably like, okay, you had your fun. We saw what you did. It's cool. It's interesting. You need to make something that's like, like what you made with little big planet, like that so, was successful. So go make little big planet. I, I like it. I, I, the fact that that is not your long shot makes me very uh It's possible. It's been curious. a long time. Oh, I, the I, team is small now, though. So. I'm I'm a believer that, like, it, it, part one of this, Media Molecule shows up to the dance. That makes sense to me. I'm like, that, that's, that, <laughs> I don't that know could happen. That will happen. I mean, they will show a game eventually, and it feels like it's been a long time. Um, So, yeah, why not? Rock and roll. Um, You ready for my? Yep. Lengthy. Resident Evil 9 will show up. Spring release date, Leon Kennedy will be the main character. Ooh, baby, baby. Let's fucking rock and roll, baby. Yeah, that's uh, possible. It, it feels really solid. I, I, I was racking my brain last night, going through every publisher, everything, and being like, Screen X, no, I didn't even, I don't, I think I just skipped over Capcom. Yeah. I was like, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. No, so let's dial it back to January when we were doing State of Plays and stuff like that. It was. Could this be there? Like, could uh, there, there was all the talks of what's the next time we're going to hear from Resident Evil. A lot of conversations have been about what's that next remake look like. But the next Resident Evil game is going to be RE9. And there was conversation of it being early or late this year. Like, there, there was a world where we got that late this year. It turned into real fast. Okay, it's probably going to be spring next year. And then now it is. It seems to be fall. That's, that's what you want for Capcom, yeah. for Monster Hunter, and and oh, Resident Evil. That's dude. a great year. Yeah. Can you imagine that investor's call? I would... Is it first person? No. Ugh, I think it should be. Just You got to finish the... I know that... They Ethan kind of Winter sucks. In, Let's pivot. He's... Okay, well, you're not doing Ethan Winters anymore. Yeah. Like, that's that's over. Uh, like, so you have to imagine... Like, I get you do Leon Kennedy, but I think you st stick in first person. I don't think so. I think you, you just need have to him saying the cheesy out. lines from your from no, your face. No, I think you need to go and rock out with Leon Kennedy and be able to see Leon Kennedy. I think that there's it's cool to be Leon Kennedy. There'll be a VR mode eventually. Let's rock out with RD9 Leon Kennedy. I think that I'm not I'm not saying that uh, I do say in this prediction spring release date. I think that that is still possible. When I say spring, I mean like uh, when I think of spring, I think of February. Uh, March, April, when in all actuality it goes all the way to like June twenty first. Yeah, I think that it, it's real spring, like meaning like late May, maybe even early June spring. Um, for what? For for already night. I thought you said Monster Hunter for spring. Oh, I know, but I'm saying that investors call would be great if they could do both spring. 
Oh, oh no, sorry. If they could do just both in the year in okay. general, but I'm you think saying, Monster Hunter gets pushed, and you think Resident Evil is no? I think that earlier? they go in Monster Hunter is like I want I. That's a I don't have it on my board, and we could talk about it. I think Monster Hunter shows up, and we get a date for it. They show it all the time. They I'm show, so well, sick of seeing. That's Monster why I'm just Wilds. like, dude, it's gotta. It's gotta be it's done. done. It's got. It's fucking done. Yeah. I th- like the what I saw in uh, June. I'm like. This is a fully playable game right now with all the mechanics you need. Sure, they might like have to add weapons and stuff like that, but like it's there. Like all of it's there. I would I would be dumbfounded if they were able to show that with that level of detail, with that level of fidelity, basically, where I'm like, oh, this is it's there. The product is fully fucking here. Right. Now you're just building out everything else. If that game is not out by June next year, I like would lose January? my fucking mind. Could it be like, I, 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 think, I mean, if you want to do January and spring, and, the, and I, like, I think uh, February and June, February early June, okay. February eleventh, June second. That for that sounds right. Uh, uh, February eleventh is yeah. But you said spring for this it, for Resident Evil. Uh, June second is spring. Oh yeah, you're right. That, that, okay. it, that's why I said yeah, yeah. I'm like we need to do the La La Land spring. Of, it's it is spring, but you know what I mean. Like it is. It's not yeah. July August, and it might be July August. But I for this prediction's sake. I think that we see it here, and if we see it here, I don't think that it is splash screen twenty twenty four. I think that they give us a date, and it's it's uh soon. God damn, I love Capcom, dude. Cap God is a whole peak right now. It's ridiculous. Connor, Street Fighter Six? Are you kidding me? Come on, they just don't miss. They just mm-hmm. do not miss. Even yeah. though, even for like their smaller games like Kinetsugami, people fucking well. love it. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, they just really can't. Maybe you just got the Marvel vs. Capcom two or the, the Marvel vs. Capcom collection. Like, I'm gonna take you for a ride, Connor. Oh my goodness. All right, my long shot. My long shot. The secret game that Jason Blundell is working on is finally revealed. It's a single-player focused first-person shooter, maybe using the SOCOM name. Probably not, (laughs) but it's probably a new thing. It's probably a new thing, like not SOCOM, but like that's the only thing that would come to mind. Like maybe they they utilize that. But in my opinion, if you're going to have Jason Blundell, you're going to have him do something fucking weird, but like also a first person shooter. But they also are trying to get something bankable. They're trying to get something that they can make a lot of money on, like to compete with Call of Duty that that Xbox and uh, Activision are like partnered on or whatever. Um, So you would you would have to imagine they're going to go with something from more realistic. Jason Blundell has a history working under uh, Call of Duty and he works for Sony. He works for PlayStation. We don't know where he is in the company. There's rumors that he's started his own studio under PlayStation. I choose to believe that. And if that is the case, I think we're we're getting closer to a reveal. I don't think this game's coming out soon, but I think that that's talking about it and saying, hey, we got the guy that you love that made Call of Duty Zombies, what it is, uh, what it could be. So, yeah, we're going to so show that off. I follow a creator. His name is uh, JC. Uh, he worked under Jason Blundell at Deviation. Mm-hmm. Um, he has confirmed he's still working under Jason Blundell. I think Blundell. I saw that exact tweet last night because I was confirming like if there's any new information about it. He so, works under him. So, yeah, like, so he's, he, he's clearly he's, some sort of he's head community, of some, No, of he's community man. Like, that's what he no, did. No, Jason that. Blundell. Oh, yes, 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 yes. He's working under him, so you have to imagine Blundell's in some position of power. Yep, Um, and so I do think that that position of power is he was working for a PlayStation studio. I like the idea that he's working on not a competitor to Call of Duty, but just a first person shooter that has some serious nuance. This is, uh, for those who don't know, the man that shouldered the back half of BO2 and BO3 Call of Duty Zombies, aka the greatest Call of Duty Zombies maps of all time. He is a terrific creative mind. He's a terrific creative force. Like, the creativity that we talk about when it comes to somebody like Ken Levine mm-hmm. is. Yeah, sure. Rapture, unbelievable. Columbia, unbelievable. I'm not saying that it's necessarily to that level, but it is. Shadows of Evil is like a work of art in its own right. Like that setting and the way that the gameplay is able to ha- uh, work. And hey, let's throw in the Apothecary Servant. What the fuck is this thing? It's cool as shit, though. Like that sort of creative direction is super important when you're talking about game design and game direction. He knows of first person mechanics really well. He knows first person shooting mechanics really well. Love the prediction. Uh, but like kill zone? I wanna You see, I, I think if you're you doing can't, so calm, you can't like, go back to the well on, on kill zone or resistance right now, I don't think. I think that just generally speaking, there's they've tried it. It doesn't have like the mass market appeal that they're probably looking for for something like this. I think that they they give 
Blundell the okay to like go make a single player focused campaign first person shooter, but also have a multiplayer suite like a Call of Duty game. But like for the single player, like give it that Sony PlayStation prestige, that sauce, that that um, prestige to yeah. to like go make something like this. We so. don't have that on the Sony side exactly. of things right now. And it's, it is important to get that. And uh, this is uh, your guy. This seems like the only guy in the company that's really like that, that, that you has would point pedigree. to to be like, yeah, like he's, he's the guy other than like people who worked on Killzone, but Killzone, like you just like, it sold like decently well, but like overall it, it was a failure. Like it, yeah. it, it would still be around today if it wasn't. So, yes. Um, my last prediction is that it's a prediction I've had for a long time, Connor. Hmm. And I'm just going to keep on saying it until I'm proven wrong. It's Kingdom Hearts 4. It's next year. It's early next year. <laughs> no, it's not. We're going to get Kingdom Hearts 4 September. Early, uh, first half of the year. I, my, my prediction is just Kingdom Hearts 4, by the yeah. way. But I've been on this wave of, I think that it, it happens. And I do, I do want to throw out the fact that there, I have one stipulation to this. Jeff Keighley seemed really excited at the end of Gamescom for Game Awards. He he said something along the lines, and this is not a direct quote. He did not say these words, but it, I we've seen confident Jeff Keighley before. That that is a legitimate thing. I know it's wild, but like sort of uh, Game Awards twenty twenty two. He's like, we got it, and then he fucking is like, oh shit, we got it. Uh, twenty twenty three, um, SGF, and we have one more big finale surprise like and that was ff7 rebirth like he knew and you, you can tell the swag when he's got it i do think kingdom hearts 4 would be a perfect thing it is though when we're talking about things that are possible to get on a jeff Keighley stage something like gta 6 is impossible that can't happen um but kingdom hearts 4 is possible and i think that could be the case so if it's not here it will be a prediction for the game boards for sure with that all being said i do think it's here um I, I would say that there's a 5% chance it's here. <laughs> yeah. I'm not getting my hopes up on this game. Oh, no, no, Ever. Never. I've, I've been on this roller coaster for I, too long. I'm not getting my It'll hopes up. It'll come out up. when it comes out. So I'll play it when it comes out. I'll probably love it when it comes out. But, like, I honestly don't even want to see a trailer for it again. Like, I just want to play the game I at do, this point. <laughs> I do think, though, that when we're talking about what I still believe state of play means, it is a lot of third party. Third party carries the weight, especially with your headline third party titles across the board the biggest announcements from third party in my opinion 2022 state of play june state of play final fantasy 16 re4 remake those were the fucking holy shit this is what a state of play can be games kingdom hearts 4 is one of those type of games in my opinion yeah. uh, like ff16 is a fucking headliner and they did seven minutes on ff16 to close out that showcase I think that it's possible and uh, immediately would send this shit to the stratosphere. That would shut the world down for a moment. <laughs> that would get Connor and I chest bumping and talking about when the duck, when you respect the duck, the duck respects you back. I think that it's possible. Square Enix prediction to override your Kingdom Hearts 4 prediction, Dragon Quest 12 instead. That'd be sick. <laughs> it's been it's been it's been so fucking long since we've seen that game. They announced it formally like three years ago at this point. Do you think that this is the place to do it? Do why you just it, want why, a Square Enix? I mean, what, why Kingdom Hearts no, over, my, my thing is, over uh, Dragon Quest? I think Dragon Quest is like, especially in Japan, Dra Dragon Quest is bigger than, than Kingdom yeah. Hearts in Japan. Like, um, like and Dragon Quest is is at like the apex of its popularity probably right now. All right, because Dragon Quest Eleven was like huge so okay so to recap these are our playstation state of play predictions we bring a lock a lengthy a long shot the lock is the guaranteed prediction 100 it's gonna happen our lengthy is our long prediction a lot of caveats a lot of details and then our long shot is our hail mary let's just see if it can happen we'll flip the fuck out if it happens connor what is your lock my lock is that Death Stranding 2 will be there, get a trailer, get a release date for early 2025. That's my prediction. 
my lock is that Ghost of Tsushima is not going to be there. I know it's bad news for a lot of people, but say to plays, let's uh, re retain some uh, realism of what these things actually are. We don't see first party too often. I'm not going to get my hopes up for Ghost 2. Connor, what's your lengthy? My lengthy is that Media Molecule, makers of Little Big Planet and Tearaway, announced their new title for PlayStation 5, and it is simply called Little Big Planet. Off the success of the whimsical Astrobot, PlayStation will ride the high and bring back a beloved and quirky title. Hell yeah, my lengthy is Resident Evil 9 shows up. It's got a spring release date, and we see the baddest motherfucker out there, Leon Kennedy, playing the lead. Connor, what's your long shot? My long shot is that the secret game that Jason Blundell maker and and creator or, or head of black ops 2 and black ops 3 zombies is working uh on his game is finally revealed it's a single player focused first person shooter and i'm thinking that they might use the socom name to uh promote this game and it's a new socom game it's probably not a new socom game but i just wanted to throw out a little bit of a of spice on top of that prediction my long shot is Kingdom Hearts 4 it is here. It is the thing that uh, goes and closes out the showcase. We all lose our mind. It's going to be epic and exciting. Uh, there has been relation with Square Enix to close out a state of play before with FF16. I think that it is equally as hype and as impressive. Kingdom Hearts 4 is my, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 4 is my long shot. Um, yeah. There we go. There we go. Uh, talk about I, we're not we're not done yet buddy well i got if we're doing this we're we're doing the rundown yay or nay connor from both of us does it show up i i so with these i always do uh two predictions as connor knows just mm -hmm. so in case connor takes one of mine i have a backup one um i did have a judas prediction in here that we we see it and we get a date do it would need to be for a date it feels like it's too soon since we last saw it Okay, so you're saying no, no go no, on Judas. Maybe I, we get that at, at Game Awards though. I do think we get. Oh, Game Awards makes too much sense to get a date. Yeah, yeah, it's it's at Game Awards. Um, and then let's go down the rundown. A couple ones that are just existing and permutating. Um, James Bond, IO. <laughs> Completely forgot about the game's existence. Yeah, and it could happen. I I would say no, but I think that's possible. Hitman Three got revealed at the a Sony uh, showcase, showcase back in twenty twenty. So I mean, it, it can work. They have the relationship. Um, I don't think so. That's one of those that just feels like eh, it exists. I, I, that's one that I'm gonna be right on not being there so many times <laughs> that like I yeah. just want to rack up those wins and it's been when a it while be, since they announced it. That's true, and also twenty twenty the dev time sort of makes sense. Maybe I. Eh, Maybe uh, maybe it does show up. Maybe yep. it's there. Um, and then uh, a fun one for you: Wonder Woman. Do we get Wonder Woman? This game that is that like that's twenty twenty one announcement. And I haven't heard any like development hell or anything like that when well, it comes to this time. swirling about it. Yeah, and then and then they were seemingly debunked that it's yeah. like it's actually not as bad as people are, are saying. Um, no, I don't think so. Um, I want to hop in Death Stranding too. I don't think shows up. I think that that's gonna be something that's saved for. Uh, game wars that's my now official prediction on it but i would be, st I'd be fucking stoked if it does yeah i'll be stoked if it does um wolverine do you think we see venom or wolverine first again i think we see venom first yeah me too i think i think we see i think venom has a better shot so uh, uh, so no on wolverine no on wolverine possibly on venom i i can this isn't no, possibly no no on venom then no on venom for me also venom. <laughs> <laughs> uh kotor remake no Absolutely fucking. Uh, I agree. It's not showing up here. Uh, do we get another trailer for Silent Hill 2? I think so. Yeah. They just need to keep promoting it. So. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. No. Yes, and we get the date. Okay. Yeah. They, they, they're in bed with Xbox, clearly. Yeah. They've, that feels they've good. Like only shown it on Xbox. Uh, it got announced at a PlayStation event. I, I understand, but like since then, it's been all Xbox. I understand. I think that they're showing it on Xbox because they just Xbox doesn't have a lot to show and they want to get some sort yeah, of. Yeah, they didn't have a lot to show at the last showcase that they. That's had. a great showcase I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, um, like, <laughs> um, and so I'm, I'm gonna say yes, and then uh, Metal Gear Solid Collection uh, Part Two. No, they're just starting that bad boy. That's coming out in like five years, if uh, ever. Um, we're gonna close it out with uh, a couple fun ones. But before we get into first party, let's rock out with Hollow Knight Silk Song. We got to say the words. We got to say the words, Connor. No. If it's going to show up at a showcase, it's going to show up at, at a 
Nintendo Direct. And even then, I don't think they need it at this point. They don't need to show it at a showcase. They can just show it. On, they can post it. To they their would YouTube own channel. the day if they just right. post it on a YouTube channel. Um, I do think that they showed it at a showcase, though. Yeah, they have. Uh, uh, no, I know. I'm saying that I think oh. that the when we see it next, it will be at a showcase. And I think that it's going to be utilized for, honestly, it would be really smart for Nintendo, for uh, Xbox, for PlayStation to use it like a KOTOR remake at the start of a showcase. Hey, we don't have something super great for the start. Can we partner with someone to go in and yeah. like have that an opener? It's big to just have association with Hollow Knight, period. Yeah. I, like, I know it's going to come to everything, but it's just like good to have people be like, oh, I saw that at the PlayStation thing. PlayStation, Hollow Knight, I'm going to buy PlayStation. Uh, I'm going to apply uh, Silk Song on PlayStation. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then do we get something from Sony Bend? I thought about it. No, it's, I feel like it might be too soon. They're working on a. I I I would imagine they're going back to the drawing board again. Again, they were making a live service game. Like no chance they're making another. Like, they're making a live service game now. Yeah. Like unless they and they must have been early in development because they only like announced they were doing that like recently. That, uh, like, I didn't know that they were making a live service. Yeah. Game. No, they're not. They they tried to make Days Gone two. They said no, and then uh, then they switch over to a live service game. Like there's no way, unless they're really passionate and really confident about what they're making, dude. Just give them. They've already worked with Naughty Dog. Just give them the Last of Us factions and have them get it over the finish line and support it. Honestly, uh, if, cool. if they're gonna be a live service studio, I'd rather have them do that than. Uh, but I would prefer them to make another single player game. Corey Biscuits, aka Corey Barlog's new game. Do we see it? No, because I think we see ghosts, and I think that you don't want to overcrowd this. Okay, I, that's a, that's the problem with a lot of these. That like I think that they're all possible, and if ghosts isn't there, then maybe. But like I just I I feel confident that ghosts is going to be there. All right. Um. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. But if if there is a banger Sony first party, it's ghost. I don't think that there's a banger Sony first party with this one. Mm. They have to say something at some I, point. I think we could see something like Dude, from I, Marathon. I before I need that. I need to stop having the conversation about PS5 having no games. I need them to just say something, please. I'm so sick of this. I'm fighting for my life over here, fighting for my life, drowning in good games. <laughs> GTA Six. Absolutely not. If it was a showcase, the conversation. No. no. You know that me. game will never be shown like for a full on trailer at a presentation. It'll be, Hey, scheduled viewing. Everybody come sit around the TV. Watch, watch us reveal this gosh darn game. Like that's what it's going to be. I agree. But uh, I, you, you know, my, we already theory, saw it. you know, my tin, tin cap theory about it of uh, the PlayStation 2020 showcase starts with GTA five because GTA six marketing rights are going to go to PlayStation eventually for one trailer. That's been my team and cap theory the entire time. I, I will stick with that theory. I think because it made no fucking sense to start out a showcase with a ad. It's not a trailer. It's not an announcement. It was a fucking ad. I kind of disagree. I, I think that you say, hey, like, uh, you know, the biggest game in the fucking world. Um, we are are in part. We are in partnership with them, basically. Um, yeah. Associate so, associate the biggest game in the fucking world with with our new console. Exactly. So let's associate the biggest game in the world with our new console. I think you do that just by literally having, uh, when uh, trailers during football games like be PlayStation the GTA, the and then it just says PlayStation at the end, just like it is for like Assassin's Creed and Xbox. Like this happens across the industry for, all the time. But when you're talking about a video game showcase that is showing off the PlayStation Five, G. People watching that and tuning into that are PlayStation players that know GTA 5. It was there wasn't a single person that saw that announcement and got excited. Not a single person. So that's why I called an ad, and that's why I think that there's a some sort of deal. And guess what? This is total tin cap. I am wrong about yeah. this 99% of the time. But if I am right about this, we burn this motherfucker down, everyone. Right. I will lose my shit. And then lastly, uh I I I've gone and teared up multiple times with the idea that one day it will happen again. We will see a Naughty Dog logo, and I'm going to be by your side, and we're going to have Brady there, and we're going to lose our fucking mind. Does it happen here? I will lose my mind if it does happen. I don't think it will, but <laughs> I would love it. If we do. Is it Last of Us 3, or is it something else? It's something else. I agree. For sure. You, Last of Us 3 is a PS6 game. For sure. Uh, the, You're probably right. You're the, probably right. The You're next right. Naughty Dog game literally needs to come out next year. 
for them to even have a shot. Yeah. And even then, it's like, no Well, I also think that the Last of Us game that was supposed to be on the PlayStation 5 was Last of Us Factions. We got to remember that. Always what we're talking about Naughty Dog, we cannot have the conversation in in the same way that we do with Ghost and with some of these other uh, providers that went and released something in 2020, 2021. Um, Oh, last two then. Um, Housemark, Blue Point. One of them, maybe. Really? And just like a stinger. Honestly, okay. you just you reveal you reveal Blue Point's next game, which I think is a remake. Personally, I know that you disagree with that. Um, just with like a, this is what we are doing, and I think that's exciting. Yeah. They're like the only studio you can really do that with with them for right now. Like, just to be like, you could just throw a title card up, Bloodborne re- remake, <laughs> and like, people, ah, like that that gets hype going. Bloodborne remake would do there. They just the don't con- like money. No joke. They just don't like money. No apparently. joke. The conversation on the PS5 very different with Bloodborne remake. If, if you were saying PS5, hey, PS5 Pro, yeah, PS5 Pro. Hey, PS5 Pro, it's gonna run at 60 and look fucking unbelievable. You're welcome. Well, I I don't think it's gonna look unbelievable. I think it just needs to run at 60 is what they. I, I know that they, that's they what people want. They just need to uncap the frame rate, but it takes work to do that. Yeah, but that game's just amazing. It's not that good. Okay. <laughs> it's just amazing. All right. All right. You ready to draft uh, some I bosses? Have first pick, right? Sure. I think I, I do. I don't care in this one. Wow. Uh, this is the first board. This is a board that I legitimately am like, we're going to choose so many different things because it is so open. We're not going to be drafting on top of each other. So, yeah, I, you can have the first one. Today, we are drafting video game boss fights. And with my first overall pick, we're going to go with maybe the most iconic boss fight of all time. We're going to go with Psycho Mantis. Dude, Kojima made a freaky guy who's turning off your your controller he's he's turning off your screen it's he's turning down the volume like this shit must have been legendary back in the day and playing it now still really fucking cool like you can see the vision it's just so fascinating like it's just like the most over the top like like badass fight absolutely not but like it's one of those situations where like somebody is using a boss fight to like show off how video games specifically can give you a different type of experience and that's what psycho mantis is super cool love that fight i love the pick not on my board but i love the pick because it is different when you think of boss fight you think of what my first pick's going to be you don't think of something that is just so fucking cool mm-hmm. and psycho mantis is obviously an unbelievable fight and a great experience. But my first pick in the boss fight draft, I'm going and choosing Mesmer the Impaler from Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. It is the best boss fight I've ever played. I was in that second phase and doing those dodges and losing my mind at everything that was being thrown at me during that second phase of just the scale, the scope, the music, the scenery, the boss design itself. Like when you think of terrific boss fights, I think that this is now the gold standard of what a boss fight can be. Mesmer the Impaler was my first pick. And with my second pick, I'm choosing my personal favorite boss fight of all time. I'm choosing the Airbuster fight from FF7 Remake. The music that plays during this, there's those who fight, those who fight further. And Connor, there is still more fighting. When that third phase kicks in and the choir kicks in, you this boss fight goes from, oh, this is pretty cool, to this is pretty great, to this is the most hype shit on the entire planet. It is Barrett, Tifa, Cloud, All Out Assault against Shinra HQ. It's fucking awesome. The Airbuster fight from FF7 Remake is my second pick. With my second pick, I'm going to pick Genichiro from Sekiro. I, uh, when it comes to like the, the set piece moment at the top of this castle fighting this, this enemy and like utilizing all the skills that you've learned up until this point, this is where the game, like I think really kicks it up a notch and it just, the dance really, it, it's the perfect example of the dance earlier in the game, like where it's like, the parries are flying. The dodges are hitting at the right moment. Doing that like flash step to like stand on top of his uh, his sword and then like and then go in and and do like a uh, a blow. Like is really really fun and cool. Um, I love this fight. I still have not beaten Sekiro, so maybe there's a fight later in the game that that's even better. But for me, this was a really impactful fight. Probably my favorite so far in the entire from software catalog that I've personally played. Yep. And I love Bloodborne, so that says a lot. With my third pick, I'm going to pick... Um, pr- I apologize if this is mispronounced. I'm, with my third pick, I'm going to pick Phalanx, the flying uh, sand snake-type enemy from Shadow of the Colossus, the 13th Colossus. 
this is my favorite fight in the game, my favorite uh, boss. And it's interesting because when I played it, I was like, oh, this is the fucking one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my entire life. And then when I was kind of looking up like kind of what the general sentiment was about boss fights online, like what are some of the best boss fights of all, all time? This is the one that everybody pointed to. I was like, oh, the internet agrees with me on something. That's pretty cool. So yeah, this is the one that people point to. This is Shadow of the Colossus like encapsulated just like this otherworldly magical experience flying through the sky, jumping onto this massive beast and taking it down. It's so, the music is so good. Like, ah, uh, it's it's amazing. I love Side of the Colossus. This is the best fight in the game, in my opinion. Love the pick, Con. Love the pick. With my third pick, I'm choosing my favorite boss fight from the Metal Gear series. I'm choosing the boss from Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. The scenery, the flowers, the stakes, the emotional impact of what is actually happening between these two characters is something that is almost second to none when it comes to story combined with cool mechanics combined with scenery and music. It is exactly what I want from a boss fight. That is my third pick. And with my fourth pick, Connor, I'm going back to the well. For a long time, I said that this video game had the best boss fights in any game ever. So I have to choose one from this game. I'm choosing Bahamut from Final Fantasy 16. When the music kicks in, the stakes that are being laid out, the scale of the fight, there is no better scaling of boss fights, in my opinion, than Final Fantasy 16. There's two that everyone points to. Bahamut's one of them. For me, the emotional stake that's in it. Uh, I've discussed before getting a tattooed of I'm a shield of Rosaria and I must do my duty. It is that level of cinematic hype that is presented before the fight even begins that shoots you off like a rocket into the night as all of this crazy shit starts happening i don't want to get into it too much but the bahama boss fight from final fantasy 16 if you know you know and if you know goddamn it should be on everyone's list with my fourth pick i'm gonna pick Zeminus from Kingdom Hearts 2, the final fight. We, we can't include all the phases. We're just going to talk about the final fight. The context of who you're with during that fight, the different phases of that fight, the aesthetic of the fight, and then that final moment before you do the finishing blow with the orb of lasers all around you and having to press X and, and uh, X and triangle at the same time to block all these lasers. Like, oh, it's so cool. Like, when I saw this as a kid, I was like, this might be the coolest thing I've ever seen in my fucking entire life. And now I'm 28 years old and I'm still like, that might be the coolest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. It's so good. I love, I love that fight. Um, love Kingdom Hearts 2 just in general. So there's so many picks that you could have gone with from just that game. So, uh, but I'm going to go with Zemnus for that one. Zemnus fight is spectacular. <laughs> it is spectacular. It's one of those, uh, Moments in video games where you're just shooting off to an apex and the question mark comes up in your mind, is this going to deliver? Mm -hmm. And then it delivers. With my final pick, I'm going to pick Poseidon from God of War 3. This was my first God of War that I ever played, my first Emery game that I ever owned uh, growing up. And I think that when it comes to spectacle, when it comes to scale, when it comes to like cinematography and like how this fight ends up going, it has not been like surpassed in the God of War series. Like they're still probably trying to chase this specific moment. I think they've gone a different direction with 2018 and Ragnarok that they're really not trying to chase this, but for what it is, this is what I miss from those games. I wish we got more of these kind of fights. So Poseidon with my final pick for me, my final pick is a fight that I've discussed many times on this channel. I got to shout out. I got to give it the love that it deserves. I'm choosing the wolf fight from hi-fi rush. Wolfgang starts pumping in the background for the, your music set piece a classical mix that is uh just mixed with edm and it's fucking gas the fighting mechanics are awesome there are lines in this fight that are super corny but delivered well enough that you're like it's kind of badass it is spectacular for me when you are combining music to the highest degree with fighting mechanics to the highest degree those parries those uh those dodges the grapples on the time of the beat for this song in particular it is purely magic i absolutely adore the fight i have to shout out king dice was my runner up i'm shocked now there was picked a cuphead boss so uh, king dice was my runner up i have the one that i hate the most the matchstick grim matchstick because oh man he put me through my pieces uh hollow knight mantis lords i have on there kefka the final 
uh, face off with Kefka and Final Fantasy VI, where there's like the different layers that you're just going up, up, up until like you finally get to take them down at the end. It's it's fucking sick. Do you have any other? Uh, I the final boss in FF Seven Rebirth was on my list. That the 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 sequencing of all those fights mm -hmm. in a row. Uh, but if you maybe choose. I, I don't even want to say there is a mix between two themes in FF uh, seven rebirth. Yeah. Connor knows what I'm talking yeah. about. Um, that fight is spectacular. Um, I have Cold Gera from Chase of the Kingdom. It's the wind. Uh, That's the temple. Best it's the best game, fight in that game. Sure. And it's, it's fucking good. It pisses me off that it's the first one that you're supposed to do. Cause um, I'm like, Oh, we just peaked. <laughs> like, all right. I got Ganon sweet, sweet cannons from twilight princess. I have phantom Twi Ganon from, uh, Ocarina. Um, and then, uh, Thor God of War Ragnarok. That, yeah. that opening fight, uh, we, we discussed it in the hot take, and I had it listed here. Uh, it's not my favorite fight in the game, interestingly enough. But there is that moment where you you, you have to, you, you put the controller down, and then you realize it's not over, and you have to pick it back up. Mm -hmm. If you know, you know. Oh, my God. I remember playing that. I, I went and bought uh, Ragnarok, uh, like a midnight release copy, bought it, went home, and I was like, I'm too tired. I don't want to play this game yet. Fell asleep. And that's normally not what I would do in college. I normally would just stay up. Fell asleep. Woke up that next morning. Went to my 8 a.m. class. I did go to my 8 a.m. because I just wanted to have the, like, energy to, like, pick up the game. Got a uh, pumpkin spice latte. Sat down. Played that fight. And my body was shaking. I Like, I, it was pure adrenaline and excitement. And honestly, I think that it's one of the peaks of that game. Man, oh man, that is a boss fight. Um, I had Dracula from Symphony of the Night, and then I had Bowser from Super Mario 64, who you face like a bunch. I, I was gonna I, throw out uh Bowser's uh I, I don't I don't even know if it's necessarily a boss fight, but Bowser at the end of Odyssey in like that whole sequencing mm -hmm. of the boss into what happens after the fact is it's awesome. I had uh, I had Titan from Final Fantasy 16 is my preferred fight. I don't know that. The, the, so yeah, so, uh, can we agree though that if there neither was chosen FF 16 boss fight, that's a crime. Yeah, the, those those two boss fights, Muhammad and Titan, are like I didn't know that they could pull it off to the scale that they did, and then they fucking did. Also, uh, I want to shout out from uh, Resident Evil Four. I don't know what their person's name is. I didn't put it on my list, but it's the short person with the white hair. Uh, that that fight where it gets fucking crazy and they go crazy. I love that fight. I love the arena and the ups and downs of it. Oh my gosh, it, it's it's great. It's gonna piss me off. I don't figure. Out. I had um, is it Salazar? Is that his name? That that sounds all right. I'm gonna have to look it up. Yep. Sorry. Um, there's some other God of War ones. Uh I, I don't want to say the name, but I'm just gonna uh Yeah, Ramon Salazar. Yeah, there's there's another one in Ragnarok. It's not the final one, it's it's the middle boss fight. Um in it, or a little bit further into the middle of Ragnarok. That is my favorite fight in that game, and I think that that fight is awesome. Um, the last one that I have is the final, not the final final boss, but the second to last if you don't if you just get the regular ending. Sorry, the second to last if you get the final ending, or the, the true ending, but the last if you're just going for a regular ending uh, in Bloodborne. Bloodborne. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, and if you want to include both of the two fights that you get from just, like, the final sequence, then yeah. sure, great. I, I mean, but. that I, it is a damn shame that I chose the wrong option because I got to see neither of them, Yeah. Um, which is insane. That that should not be allowed. You need to get your shit together uh, from soft. You, you should force me to play that one. The fact that, and I, like, that I can just... If I didn't know, can you imagine just not knowing? You play mm -hmm. that entire game, you you get to that moment, you get the ending that you do or that I got, and then you're just like, all right, I'm done. I, I beat the game. That was cool. I would have looked it up immediately. But, but certain why. people don't. Certain people don't. That's weird. Look things up. I mean, like, but there's the a boss happened? fight right before that you could you could consider in your mind. Like, oh, yeah, that's the final boss. Yeah, I don't. I did not feel that way after finishing that boss that would have technically oh, I didn't, been your well, final I, boss. I looked things up, so I knew beforehand. I was like, oh, I'm supposed to have one or two more boss fights. I didn't know zero was an option. And really interesting stuff. Yep. All right. That was your casual gaming conversation for this week. Appreciate you hanging out with us and peace out.